which category, because you said you competed in a few different ones, which category of bodybuilding would you say is your favorite? I would still say classic. Classic. I love it because they have like the old school classic symmetry and they get to do a lot more posing as opposed to men's physique. You're just there in board shorts. In board really shorts. That's the board shorts category. Front and back. Which I mean, you know, I'm not knocking them. They have great physiques, but it's way more fun just use in your whole body to pose for classic physique yeah it, it's more impressive let's call Absolutely. it what it is it's definitely definitely more impressive i've seen some of those uh some of the board short guys and, and it's it's like okay i see why they have them in that they're not they didn't put on the size in their legs exactly they, they just didn't some yeah. of them do but then 90 percent of them don't i'm sorry to say it but a lot of men's physique guys they know they're not going to have to show them so they don't care so about they don't it. care about them that yeah. much which is it makes sense and yeah. it's fine to have the category i mean it's do you so i've often wondered this as well when you win in any of those categories wh- where do you have to place to get your card okay so you start out at a local show you have to get top two and then you go to what we call nationals from there. And then you have to, in bodybuilding, I think you have to win. But classic, you can get top two and then you'll go pro there. Got it. So you have to go qualify at your local home show. I would start here in Arizona. And then I would go to like USA's in Vegas or nationals in Miami. Mm-hmm. And then 2016, I was top four in the country. I mean, we had 40 to 45 guys in our class. I was in the toughest C class. And then 2017, they introduced the D class. It was a little taller. And then I was like, okay, this is my time to shine. I'm over six foot. And then I went in and won. You won at uh, Classic. Yeah, I won in Classic. You won in Classic. Yeah. Okay, so you've won in Classic. You get your card. Then what happens? Then you're supposed to go do pro shows. So that's when I I have not competed since I went pro. I kind of semi-retired. Um, I was kind of burnt out. I had a long run, you know, 10, 11 years competing. Um mm-hmm. I I was kind of dumb when I was young. I didn't get my blood work done much. I should have been going to do this. So I did start having some issues. Some of it's from eating bad. I used to eat really bad, especially in the off season. Some of it was from, you know, some steroid use, taking mm-hmm. anabolic. So I had some cholesterol issues. I had some liver enzyme numbers that were off. And sure. I kind of wanted to take a step back and just focus on the business from there. When you say you ate bad, I mean, was it just entirely just a calorie count to get, you just needed mass? You yep. didn't care what it was, yep. cheeseburgers, pasta, yep. any of it? I would literally eat frozen pizzas and tater tots at night, <laughs> pop tarts, you know, just spiking the insulin beforehand. My kind of diet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that is where I, I think... I mean, you've been at the ground level of this, so I'm sure you can attest to it. There are certainly a lot of aspects of professional bodybuilding that are not healthy. Yes. It is not a healthy sport. Yes. And that is one area where you have, you mentioned the spiking of insulin. Yep. I mean, you've got uh, you've got a human being that is taking their blood sugar and spiking it like a roller coaster mm-hmm. on just a, not even a daily, like a, like a, like a bi-hourly basis where yes. you are eating just the, the insane foods. You're putting on all this size and muscle and, and fat too because you're in the office you yes, just want you size put on a little fat just put it on and then at the end you're going into a cut and oftentimes i mean i again i've had friends that have done it i've never done shows it just wasn't my thing but the deep cuts the ones where you you know you end up tracking your urine you end up yes. dehydrated in addition to all the issues that you mentioned and we'll get to anabolics in a second but what what would you would you recommend that someone do this? I mean, is this as a because now you've pivoted, you're sort of more now into you're you're a health coach. You're teaching a healthy lifestyle, not necessarily bodybuilding. Yes. What would you say to someone who's on the fence about doing maybe one or the other? Yeah, I'm still okay with it. I mean, I I love bodybuilding. I think it's one of the best sports in the world. I mean, it's built you know, basically built my business. It's built who I am. So now I do have a lot of clients that want to compete and they're beginners Mm -hmm. and I have pivoted, but I just have them do a safer approach. You know, I'm like, Mm -hmm. if you're going to go do this show, NPC show, everyone is going to be taking some type of performance enhancing drug. Like you cannot go up there and expect to be able to compete with these guys or gals if you're not taking something. 